Hello, I'm Jose with Free Sky North America. Today's video is about fine tuning your stabilized setup after your maiden flight. These are the steps I take once everything is adjusted, or a few things to do if something wasn't quite perfect. So your maiden is complete, you were able to trim your plane, and you checked all your gyro modes. The first thing I do is sub trims. Moving your trims to sub trims is a practice that more people should do. Go to model and go to trims. And if you take a look, so here's trim rudder section. Below it, there's a move trim to sub trim. So this will move whatever trim that you have in your rudder over to sub trims and it'll center up your trim. But if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see a move trims to sub trims with S's and that will move every trim over to sub trims. So I'm going to click on that. Asks you if you want to move your trims to sub trims. Yes. Now, if I exit out of this menu, go to the main page, you'll notice that all my trims are now gone. They're not gone. They're moved to sub trims. So if I go to output, let's say ailerons, and now you can see that in the sub trims, you've got a value over there. Once your trims are moved to sub trims, you no longer have any trims there. So if you accidentally hit some trim, you know exactly where to put it back to make your plane fly straight again. The next thing I do is set up my fail safe. What is a fail safe? Fail safe is what the receiver will do in the event of signal loss. Go to model and go to RF. Now you can scroll down to the fail safe area over here and notice it says not set right now. I always choose custom. And if you notice, all the channels default to hold. For some of these channels on some of your planes, hold might actually be the correct option. So for example, if you want a surface not to change its state, like for example, retracts or flaps or whatever, if you don't want that to change, if it goes into a signal loss uh, situation, then you make it hold. Um, let's take a look at this. So ailerons right now, right now is set to hold. Let's go ahead and change it. We've got an option of custom or no pulses. Let me explain no pulses for a second, and then we'll go to custom because that's the one that we'll use. So no pulses is if the receiver loses signal, it doesn't send any signal or any pulses to the channel, to the servo. And this is not useful for us, but this is useful for planes or drones that have a flight controller, and you want the flight controller to take care of the fail safe. So when it recognizes that there's no signal going to the servos, then it'll activate its own fail safe. So since we're not running flight controllers, we want to use custom. So let's go into custom and let's see what we can do with custom. So one of the things that you can do is you can enter a value here. So if you wanted to, right now you'll see that you've got a little bit, the green is where the surface is right now. So that's at zero. If I move this over, you'll see that. So that's what the green is. The green is where the fail safe is set to right now. If you look over here, you can actually move a surface. And if you want, if I want, say, that much all the way over, I can then put that value in. So that's what it's going to do when it goes to the fail safe. Obviously, that's not good. What do we want? We want when the stick is centered. So we'll go ahead and press this button while the stick is centered. And that is going to be my position. So it's 5.7% trim is with the aileron centered. I'll go over to elevator, change that one over to custom as well. And we will press this button to put the value in. There it is. Throttle. And a throttle, I would say that you want that with the throttle all the way down to be your fail safe. There you go. And rudder. Now, some people may want a little bit of rudder. So you may want to, let's go over here. Give it a little bit of a turn. So if you get into fail safe mode, the plane will not just go straight and level and fly away. You might give it a little bit of turn. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of turn. There you go. So that's what the rudder will do if it loses signal. 
Now, if you have gear, for example, if channel five was gear, you may want to put your switch in the up position so that way, and then make it custom and put that value in so that way that if you do lose um, um, signal, the gear will remain up. It's always better to belly land a plane than to have the possibility of ripping out your gear. So the interesting one is down here. We can go all the way down to stab mode one. So stab mode one is your mode switch that tells the plane whether you want self-level mode, stabilized mode, or gyro off. Let's change that to custom. Flip the switch to self-level mode, and we'll put that value in. So what this will do is go into auto level mode. So when you lose signal, your planes will level out the wings. All right, so now I would say that my fail safe is set. I can get out of this menu and we can move on. The next thing I would do is to get your gyro gain adjustment to a fixed value. We had this knob over here set as the gyro gain adjustment knob. And during your maiden, you adjusted it until everything was good. So it'd be good if we didn't have to remember that position every time we go to this model and have to put it there. So one thing that we can do is we can make that value into a fixed value. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what that value is. Go into model and go to your outputs. Scroll down to that channel, which is channel 13. And there you go. 39.9% is the value that we arrived at. And we can make that 40%. It's not that accurate. Um, so we want a value of, say, 40%. Go over here to VARS, and let's put that value of 40% here. Let's name it. I'll name it gain value. Now over here in values, this is where we put that 40%. So now all we have to do is plug this var into that mix and that's the value of the gain adjust knob. What you can do if you want is you can add actions at the bottom and what the actions do is change that value. So let's add an action over here. And we'll do, say, trim five up. And that would be add. And we can add maybe 2%. So every time I hit the up button, it'll go 2%. And let's add a new action over here. Let's go trim, trim down. And that will be minus. Say the same amount too. So if we have to fine tune it, you don't have to do this if you know that that gain value of 40% is good enough. But if you want the ability to fine tune in the air, now we have that ability. Over here, you've got your 40% and we can change it now. Trim center. There's 34, 32. Trim center. There you go. So now we just have to put this var into the mix. So I'm going to return out of that. I'm going to go all the way to the mix area, scroll down to the gain adjust mix over here, edit it. And right now the source is this pot. Let's change that. So I go to go to category and go to vars. And there it is, the gain value. Whoops, I uh, moved. There it is. And there it is, the gain value um, var. Now, notice it's grayed out. People get confused that it's grayed out. Well, the reason why it's grayed out is because you can't select it. It's the only one there. So you don't have to select it. It's going to be there. And we return back out. There it is, gain value. Now, remember that for this pot, because this pot was from minus 100 to positive 100, we had to put a limit on it, and we did that with a curve. So this will change that gain value. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. 
by deleting it over here. And now down here, if you look at outputs, you'll see that the um, output is 40%. The next thing that we need to do is recalibrate trim center. When we initially set up this model, in the gyro setup, we calibrated trim center with the stick center, and that was, of course, with the trim center, too. Since we flew this plane, we adjusted the trims, it's always a good idea to recalibrate trim center. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go over here to system, out of this mix first, system, device config, scroll down to receivers, and go to stabilizer config. And I can come over here to Stabilizer Group 1 and go to Stick Center Calibration. Start that. Please confirm to begin. And my sticks are centered, obviously. Of course, you don't have to worry about throttle. And our trims are set to the sub-trims already. But once we hit this, now it'll know what center is. Calibration is finished. That's pretty much it. We are now done with the setup. The next part of the video is fine tuning the self level mode if it wasn't quite perfect. So, in your Maiden, you notice that when switching to self level mode, the plane has a tendency to drop altitude. That would happen if you did not have enough up pitch when you calibrated the level on your plane. You can redo the level calibration, but if the wings are already perfectly level and all you need to do is correct pitch, it might be better to leave that alone and only adjust the pitch. I'll show you both methods. First up, let's redo the level calibration. The first thing I do is get the plane as close to the initial level that we did earlier. Level the wings and get the pitch to where it was before. Obviously, I can't tell if this is exactly what I had before, but I can tell if I go in and out of the gyro mode. So right now I'm in self level. It looks like my elevator isn't moving, but my ailerons are. So I am not as level as I was before. So let's try that. And now it looks like my, let's go a little bit that way. Let's see if I can get this a little bit better. So when I go into self-level, it looks like the elevator is going up. So I need to give it a little bit more up pitch. Try that. Getting better. Looks like my elevator is right. And it looks like I can look at my ailerons. This one's going up. so. I got to bring this up just a little bit. Let's see here. Okay, that's pretty close. So that's how I can tell if I am close to what I had before, and now I can make my adjustment. So if I need a little bit of up, I can just move the plane up just a little bit. Double check again. Maybe a little bit more. And then now I can recalibrate um, my level calibration by hitting this button over here. So what you need to do is get the plane as close to what it was before and then adjust from there. All right, so the next method is by doing an offset. So let's take a look at the configuration menu over here. And I'm going to scroll down. And this is where you did your modes, your invert for your gyro. And over here is where you can adjust your gain for the stab and the auto level. So auto 1v1 is actually auto level gain. But if I go down here, I've got aileron auto level offset, and I've got elevator auto level offset. So if my plane is level right now, and I want just a bit more um, elevator, say elevator up, we can adjust this. Now, obviously, I don't know 
whether that zero, if, if I go positive, if it's up or if it's down, because it depends on whether or not the gyro is um, reversed or not. But let's go ahead and adjust it and see what happens. So I'm going to make it way off. And it looks like that gives me down. So I know that if I go over here to zero, I can just go a negative number to give me a little bit more up. So let's just say, let's go to 2%. We'll try two. And that'll give me just a bit of up. There you go. And that's how you do it. So you can do that for your elevator and you can do that for your ailerons. If you just need a little bit of adjustment, you can adjust the auto level offset to bring it into what you need. So generally what I do is if I notice there's a little bit of up or a little bit of down, I'll adjust this, take a flight and see what happens and adjust from there. Usually you can fit, you can do it in one flight. The next thing that we can do in here is my auto level gains. When you adjust this knob, you're actually adjusting the stabilized mode gains. If you need to adjust the auto level gain, you can do that here. So here's aileron auto level gain, and here is elevator auto level gain. Now, what usually happens is when you go into auto level mode, you'll figure that, or you'll, you'll realize that the gain is set really aggressive and a plane snaps into position. So if you play with these numbers, you can actually bring down the gain a little bit to make the plane go into its auto correction a little bit smoother. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment in this video, or you can email me at jose, J-O-S-E, at freesky-rc.com. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a good day.